You know what was a great game? The 2020 Mafia remake of the 2002 original Mafia game. It was an amazing ground up remake of a really outdated game. Oh, and another good game was Spider-Man PS4 from 2018. That game looked and played great. That level of quality should hold up for quite some time before any sort of rematch. Well, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy from the early 2000s were masterpieces, but severely limited by the hardware of its time. Surely a 2021 remaster of these games would be a classic Rockstar home run. Oh. My. God. Wait, why in the world does Grand Theft Auto 5 have like four different versions now, while Grand Theft Auto 4 hasn't even been touched? And wait, now that I'm looking at it, what's up with Skyrim having 12 different editions and the only exciting thing going on with Oblivion is a modder creating a self-made remaster? So we gamers have a complicated relationship with video game remakes and remasters. It can be amazing when your favorite game of all time is announced to be getting an update. It brings you more to play from your favorite franchise, and usually upon announcement, these projects often carry a decent amount of good faith with fans, as it should be pretty tough to mess up something that is such a solid base to work off of. Well, it should be hard to mess up. That and years upon years worth of remakes coming out of the games industry has us all pretty burnt out on the concept, especially when there's no shortage of botched remasters and remakes. Either they are painfully average, leaving most fans still only playing the original, or we've also been seeing instances where a game will get a full remaster only three, maybe five years after its initial release, looking more like a cash grab than a legitimate project. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Sony. But the general topic of taking old games and making them new again is pretty interesting to talk about. Like the way I think there's generally some confusion between the terms remaster, remake, and reboot, as well as a plethora of examples of great releases, okay releases, and just plain bad attempts to bring old games back to life. We're gonna look at all of this as I try to explain and understand our complicated relationship with these games. Why we simultaneously love and hate them. I really do wish there was a singular term that encapsulates the concept of an old game being brought a new life that doesn't correlate directly with one of these three types of games that we get. Most people use remake and remaster pretty interchangeably even though they're both distinctly different things. Maybe for the rest of the video I'll use the term rework to mean this in a more general sense. Because a remaster is when a game gets a coat of new paint in the graphics department, with extremely little to no changes to the gameplay or narrative. And even with some of the graphical changes we see in remasters, they don't always look that different from the original, though this depends on the age of the original game. Examples of remasters would be the Halo Combat Evolved remaster, or the Mafia 2 remaster, or the PS4 Last of Us remaster. These games remained mostly unchanged from their original versions beside graphical updates that brought these older games into new tech generations. Next we have the remake. This is when a game is changed in major ways to modernize the experience. Massive changes to the gameplay and graphics are the most common things we see change in a remake. Most times the narrative, or at least the narrative structure, will remain intact, but that isn't a hard and fast rule and we will see narrative changes from time to time. Examples of remakes would be the N Mafia Definitive Edition and the Resident Evil 4 remake. Last we have the reboot where elements of a franchise are used to make a completely new game from scratch, often trying to produce a new experience within an existing IP. Gameplay and graphical features can be completely brand new or be new iterations of what had been seen in the past. There is no precedent for how anything in a reboot needs to be in its creation. Examples of some reboots would be the Wolfenstein game from 2019 and Doom 2016. Both of these used an existing franchise and made something brand new with what was already there. And I know most people know the difference between these three when discussing the games they like, but in popular discourse, these three terms are just tossed around so much, they kind of lose meaning sometimes. Again, because there isn't a general term, that doesn't also mean a specific type of reworked game. Yeah, I feel like rework could, well, work. So with the distinction out of the way between the different types of reworked games, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite examples and why I think they work so well. 
because we'll eventually get to the bad ones and the reasons why reworks in general are becoming fatiguing to the industry. My favorite remaster is SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated from 2020. It's a great example because it stays so faithful to the original game. The only thing changed here are the greatly improved graphics, which for as much as they do change, they do a great job at staying true to the original game as well as the show itself. The only additions are new little Easter eggs and references to key memes and jokes and parts of episodes from the show that released after the original game. It was so much fun to hop back into this simple, nostalgic platformer, but this time pumped the brim with character and charm from its source material. It was a truly great example of how to remaster a classic video game. I also absolutely loved the Mafia 1 remake. As a young teenager, I was a huge fan of Mafia 2 and had a good amount of fun anticipating the release and exploring New Bordeaux in Mafia 3. I remember this remake popping up as kind of a question mark to me when I first saw the trailers announcing a remake of a game I never played before. But man, did I enjoy this game. I had no idea how good of a story it was hiding inside that original Mafia coat of paint. I remember I had bought Mafia 1 for the original Xbox, but I was probably never gonna get around to playing that version of it. I'd heard the controls were awkward and that parts of the campaign, particularly when racing, section were damn near impossible to beat, frustrating many players at the time. So getting a remake was an amazing thing for Mafia fans like me who never experienced that great story that began the entire franchise. I mean, so much care was brought into this remake, particularly the casting for the roles to bring this story to life. They were just phenomenal. Like I said, I never played the original, but I can't imagine fans of that game not also being blown away at the quality here. Then using the fun foundational gameplay from Mafia 3 and then keeping that original story intact and then just building everything else out to the best of their ability, Hangar 13 showed me with this game that the Mafia series is truly in good hands. This is the definitive way to remake a severely outdated game. So I don't wanna be overly negative, but there are some reworks that are just not good. It's important for fans and developers to know the kinds of mistakes that screw these games up. These games that theoretically should be guaranteed to make fans happy and make the developers lots of money. So we have to talk about some of the reworked games that I don't like so much and the reasons why. So if you've seen really much anything else from my channel, well for one, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you watching and hope you like the videos I'm making here. If you're new, thanks for watching this one. Maybe hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the video so far. But everyone should know that Halo Combat Evolved is my favorite game of all time. For reasons that I get into in my older videos. The Halo Combat Evolved remaster from 2011. Yeah, that shit is garbage. I know most people who don't have an intimate connection with the original game may look at it and think, yeah, this is fine. It looks 2010 enough. Or that it may even look good to them. It pains me watching a streamer or YouTuber play Halo CE and use these graphics. It just hurts. It hurts my eyes. Because if you're somebody who really spent time with the OG game back in the day, you know where this remaster is seriously lacking. But for those of you who maybe don't, sum it up quickly, the change in the art direction in this remaster objectively changed the mood and tone these old levels were supposed to invoke in the player. And there were plenty of other issues with this version of the game, best explained by popular YouTuber Noodle in a video that I'll have linked in the description if you're curious and looking for a laugh. Halo Combat Evolved is a simple game. It has simple story. Most of the emotional weight that the player feels comes from the game's environmental design and atmosphere. With the technology available in 2001, Bungie knocked this out of the park. The detail they packed in the game's levels and the way it makes the player feel as they traverse them is high up on the list of things that made this game so special. If you set out to remaster this game, even if you truly believe you're making the graphics better by making them more realistic, but then you completely trash the intent behind what the original graphics were trying to convey, then you failed. All you did was create something that ultimately looks worse than the game you were trying to modernize. Another example of a bad rework would be the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remaster. This one I was excited for because I've been dying to play these games with modern controls. 
because that was my biggest gripe with going back and playing these old video games on the original consoles. I can handle the old graphics. It's the fact that the X button on Xbox is to aim your gun. It's so tough to go back and play these games for an extended period of time. But my excitement quickly faded when I saw the reviews, jokes, and memes upon release. Creator Rockstar Games has decided to pay tribute to this modern gaming monolith and its two equally acclaimed PS2 era sequels, Vice City and San Andreas, by producing a collection of re-releases that cuts more corners than a Diablo Stallion in a Liberty City street race. At best, this trilogy is ill-conceived and half-finished. At worst, it's straight up broken. If this half-baked definitive edition is anything to go by, I have to wonder if Rockstar reveres its own games as much as the rest of us do. Oh my god, did they find a way to fuck these up. I mean, this is Rockstar. They're supposed to represent the epitome of quality and care in their games. They aren't supposed to release flops, but man did this one flop. What's worse is that this should have been an objective win. I mean, you have three beloved open world games. All you needed to do was get them on the new hardware with a bare minimum of better frame rates and folks would have probably been fine. Include quality new visuals and people would have just been shoveling their money at Rockstar for these games. But this came out so ugly, so buggy, so broken that people who bought it couldn't even enjoy it. And those who saw that coverage never bought it with its $60 price tag. I still want to snag this trilogy when it eventually goes on sale low enough for me to justify it. But again, I'm just here for the controls. For me, they could have just ported the original games, maybe added achievements. They could have kept the original graphics, up the frame rate, modernized the controls, and charged a bit less, and I would have picked this up without hesitation. Or at the very minimum, just let me play my original discs in my Xbox through backwards compatibility. But. I didn't play these remasters, so I'm not really sure all the nitty gritty detailed reasons why it's so bad. I can link the IGN review below if you want to see more on that, because I felt like that did a good job explaining how they experienced the game. But regardless, it's another example of developers that are working on a remaster that mistook newer graphics for inherently better, regardless of the quality of the new graphics or how well they represented the original game's design. Both examples here of Halo and Grand Theft Auto both have newer graphics, sure, but both were horrible at representing the original artistic intent of the games they're based off of. And another important aspect of this conversation is the fatigue we as gamers are experiencing with video game reworks of all types. Though this can be such a double-edged sword. Because on the one hand, there are some games that really do warrant a remaster or remake because they contain aspects that have very cool implications with new technology. The remake I'm most excited for at the moment is the incredibly mysterious not sure if it's happening, Splinter Cell Remake. A stealth game from 2002, getting a full ground up remake in the 2020s has so much potential to be amazing. But for every rework with potential, there are ones that nobody asked for. Like getting a remaster of The Last of Us Remaster. It really just felt like they made this so they can charge players again to have the game on PS5. Like, sure, they upgraded the gameplay slightly to feel closer to part two, but this wasn't worthy of another $60 for a game players already bought twice. Like, I get they brought this one to PC, which was cool, but why re-release it on PlayStation? Just make it a big deal that it's coming to PC and charge the PC players because it's the first time they're buying the game. But to charge PlayStation players another $60 for a game they've paid $60 for twice feels like a cash grab. Another part of this we even see in the film industry these days. New and original stories are getting increasingly rare. And the same goes for games. It feels like nearly every game announcement is a sequel or a rework. Anything that does try to innovate or make something new ends up being incredibly generic as it usually ends up chasing gaming trends that are popular at the time. They always lack cohesion and never feel like a complete idea. When you have so many game reworks coming out every year and the unpredictability of whether or not these games will even function on release has players super burn out on the idea of getting remakes and remasters. And after looking into both the good and the bad, my advice to any studio looking and reworking an old game would be to follow three very specific steps. One, decide whether or not you care about the game you're reworking. Like, don't outsource its production to another subsidiary studio. 
If it's your IP and you truly care about bringing this old piece of art back to life for a new audience, then do that and fully commit to it. Two, once committed, follow the original game's artistic vision. Put in the work to make something worth your customers' money. Because if you're planning to stray too far in a new direction, then your time and money would better be spent making something new, not a halfway complete amalgamation of old and new ideas. And then three, be clear in your vision. Is this just a remastering of graphics? Cool, people will still want that, depending on the age of the game. So then focus on that and do it well. Is this going to be a remake? Then no problem, just make sure the changes are being made to fit within the world of the original game. The examples of the Mafia remake and the SpongeBob remaster are both great examples of studios that displayed focus, discipline, and care when creating their reworks. That's why both of these games turned out great. And those examples are why we love remasters and remakes. They're why we get excited when we hear our favorite older game is potentially getting one. But the oversaturation of them in the market taking up development time that could be spent on new things, which is especially painful when these rework projects flop, are the reasons why we as gamers are beginning to get so tired of these projects. This trend in modern gaming is why it feels inevitable that Rockstar will eventually announce a remastered version of Red Dead Redemption 2 for the new generation of consoles and charge $70 this time. Games like that don't really need it, while at the same time anyone can list off some of their favorite games that do. And those are the reasons why we hate reworks also. Thanks for watching.